I had some time available on a weekday and decided to move out and explore some of the places nearby. My friends suggested me to visit Lakundi in Gadag district of Karnataka. I searched the web and found that Lakundi had numerous temples. The Manikeswara temple caught my attention. When we were moving on the state highway, we saw two huge tanks on the right side of the main road. When we turned left, we saw a temple which looked a bit small but the rock temple had a very beautiful design. As the mobile phone camera was zoomed to see what lay there, we were amazed by the beauty of the temple. We found a small habitation near a paddy and fleur field. There was a small hut where some cattle could be seen. The villager living in the hut had taken various stone artifacts as well as stone slabs and stone pillars from the nearby temple. It was evident because this area does not have any hill and the only source of the stone slabs and the pillars must have been the temple, till and many stone slabs and stone columns. It was clear that these slabs and columns must have earlier been a part of this grand temple. Lakundi in Gadag district of Karnataka is a tiny village on the way to Hampi from Hubbulli. Lakundi 11 kilometers from Gadag in the east. It is 14 kilometers from Dambul and 25 kilometers from Mahadev temple, Itdi. So I decided to go there and have a first hand look. But since the overall direction was known we decided to walk towards the temple. As we moved across the fleur fields towards the temple, there was an iron wire mesh fence all around the temple. It was clear that the temple is a protected site. Finally, we came to the correct road, which was nearby and it led to the main entrance of the temple. This is the view of the temple from the back side among the fleur fields. The temple was fenced all around by an iron mesh. It has a very beautiful garden all around it. It was. We retraced our steps and took the narrow cement road leading to the temple. As we move towards the main temple, towards the small road, we can find huge coconut trees on the left side and wild vegetation on the right, there is an iron gate at the entrance of the main temple. Surrounding at the main gate, there is garden which takes visitor to a different world. The place appears to have come out of heaven on earth. We can see huge garden with lush green with different types of flowers and other plants surrounding the temple. In front of the temple, we can see huge step well which has been covered by iron pipes. The overall environment around the temple presented a very beautiful sight. Archaeological Survey of India has really done a wonderful job by barricading and preserving this beautiful monument and also maintaining a very beautiful garden. However during our stay at the temple, we did not find a single visitor. Only a young boy at the temple told us that very few people come to this temple. He also told me that regular prayers by the priest of the temple are being offered by one person. He comes early in the morning, offers prayer, then locks the gagra and goes home. The temple from outside clearly indicates a Chalukyan architecture. It was made of soapstone or chloride schist. It's easy grayish to black in color. The stones also had a greenish shade. A beautiful garden has been developed all around the temple. They have done a good job in preventing encroachment and beautification of the surrounding area of the temple. The garden has enhanced the beauty of the temple. This is an old temple at Lakundi in the Gadag district of the state of Karnataka in India. Lakundi was called as Loki Gudi in the inscriptions. This is a very beautiful temple which lies directly on the outskirts of the city. It was a very pleasing sight. This single temple actually is a Trikuta temple. Trikuta is a temple with three shrines. It has three sanctum sanctorum. Presently, only the front sanctum has an image of Lord Shiva's Lingam. The other two sanctums on the right and the left side are empty. The one on the right side is used as a go-down. The one on the left side is usually kept in locked condition. At the entrance of the temple are huge beautifully carved pillars. These pillars create a beautiful symmetry in the mandapa. 
These are equally spaced pillars of the same shape and design. The four pillars at the entrance of the mandapa have ancient inscriptions written at the base of all the four pillars. The inscriptions appear to be in old Kannada script. The pillars are all very beautiful and still with the mirror polish. One can even see his own image in the pillars. Standing at the entrance of the main mandapa presents a very beautiful sight. There are two doors facing the Shiva Ling. The first door is beautifully carved with various floral motifs as well as geometrical patterns. Here you can see the detailed carving on the door frame. There is a small vestibule after the mandap gate, which leads to the statue of Lord Nandi. The statue was comparatively smaller as compared to the temple. Looking at the intricate carvings or both the door frames, it reminded me of the beautiful Kashi Vishwana temple at Lakundi. The door frames had intricate carvings with various deities. However, the overall look and feel of the temple was like an old Jain temple. The door frame has seven layers of floral prints, geometrical patterns, carvings of deities and various other figures all around the main door and it looked very beautiful and majestic. At the top of the door frame was the symbol of two elephants whose front feet were in a raised position. Their trunks were joined at the center. They were showering flowers on a deity sitting below their trunk. It is also known as the Gaja Lakshmi sculpture. As we look up towards roof, we find beautiful floral pattern made on the roof. It looks like lotus flower or water lily with three layers. There was very little light in the vestibule of Lord Nandi and hence, the quality of the video may not look good to the viewer. A unique and beautiful feature of this temple is the wonderful carvings and motifs which have been made at the door portal of all the three shrines as well as the main gate of the Garb Griha. Various floral and geometrical patterns along with images of animals and birds as well as various deities have been depicted. None of the deity was a typical Hindu deity from the Hindu pantheon of gods and goddesses. The stone carving of the entrance gates of the sanctum of all the three shrines reminded me of Kashi Vishwanath temple at Lakundi. At the bottom of the door frame, one can find engraved sculpture of four deities, two of them on the right side appears to be feminine and another two appears to be male. The face of three deities has been purposely defaced from the wall and it is very difficult to know who they are. The first deity or the image on the extreme right holds a kamandala in the right hand and has floral torch on the left hand. She wears two layers of beautiful necklaces as well as kamarband. The body posture is very beautiful and the hair appears to be curly. She is also wearing anklets in the foot. The second image seems to have survived the defacement of the face. The other two faces are unidentifiable. The area just covered all the four deities on the floor is very beautiful. The floral pattern shows beautiful carved flowers and their buds in different stages of flowering. Similar pattern is repeated on the left side of the frame of the inner sanctum. Here also, all the four images are beautifully carved. However, these images have their faces defaced. Only, one image has the facial feature intact. Out of the four images, two appears to be female which are on the extreme left side. These images are beautifully ornamented. The hair of all the images are curly. They are wearing heavy ornaments. The Kirti Mukha figure as well as the floral prints are repeated here. As we move up, we find five vertical panels on the door frame. The first panel is of diamond-shaped geometrical figure which continues from the bottom to the top. The second is of various human-like images with different types of musical instruments. The three vertical panel has geometrical rectangular pattern. This is followed by the fourth vertical panel which has floral designs and in each floral designs, there is image of a lion-like mythical figure showing different emotions. The central vertical panel has a kumbha or an image of a pot which looks like a typical China ceramic vase. There are some mythical creatures with the body of lion and face of horse or birds like beaks. These panels have been found on huge carved rocks which are having square section.
As we enter Gava Griha, a Shivaling can be seen. The size of Shivaling is comparatively small as compared to the overall size of the Gava Griha. The Shivaling appears to be placed on small layer of stone. Now is the time to enter another shrine, the third shrine, which is on the right side of the main Gava Griha. The door from the main Mantapa leads to the third shrine. The shrine is having beautifully carved door frame and on either side of the frame, there is miniature Jalle work. There is middle Mantapa and Gava Griha can be seen from the entrance of the main door of the third shrine. The vestibule as well as all the main shrine is empty of any deity. The lintel portion of the main door frame of the third shrine is very beautifully carved. As we see here, lots of efforts have been put up by the sculptors in making the door frame. The entire mantapa is vacant. As we can see in the sanctum is presently empty. It has plain walls without any sculpture or carvings. On the rooftop is a lotus floor made in three layers of petals. As we move out of left Gava Griha in the front, we can see the right. There is a vestibule connecting the main mantapa with the Gava Griha. The door frame of the Gava Griha is very beautifully embellished and one can see two columns on either side of the door frame. However, we can see floral and geometrical designs at the entrance door of Gava Griha. Here also, door frame of the inner sanctum is very beautifully carved. The rooms are presently empty. One of the rooms is being used as a storeroom. It was clear that these two rooms earlier had images of deities which have now been removed. This is the entrance gate to the shrine on the left side. One can clearly see that the gate is very beautifully carved. There are various types of floral prints on the entrance gate of the left shrine. One of the door frame has a very beautiful image of two big elephants carved at the center top of the door. This is a very unique sculpture of elephants which normally accompanies the Gaja Lakshmi. However, I have not yet seen such images of elephants anywhere of this size. These elephants have been made big in size and very beautifully carved. The central deity does not appear to be Lakshmi. The viewers can form his own opinion on this subject. This door frame also has various human-like forms wearing a crown and appears to lift something above their head. Here, we can find some mythical forms in which a male and female figure with lower part of snake is shown. Both of them is wearing a crown or a headgear. Their bodies are twisted in ecstasy. Their upper part is well ornamented and they appear to be in dancing pose. Their lower part is consisting of snake body which is entwined in the form of symbol of infinity. This pattern is repeated again four times. These represent the Nagas which are semi-divine deities of half-human and half-serpent that resides in the netherworld or Patla Loka. They can also take human forms occasionally. These images are common in Jainism, Buddhism as well as Hinduism. They are considered as children of Rishi Kashyapa and Kudru. They normally reside in Nagaloka or Patala Loka. They are often associated with water bodies such as rivers and seas and are guardian of treasure. In Hindu mythology, we find many other forms of Naga Sheshnaga, Nagraja Swasuki, Naga Takshaka and Naga Kakotka. In the Buddhist tradition, one Naga form attempted to become a monk. People tell that it is impossible to take complete human form. However, Lord Buddha's devotees claim the method to become the human monk. The Nagas are followers of Virupaks, 
the heavenly king who guard the western direction. They also act as guard upon mountain Sumeru protecting the Devas from the Asuras. There is a story in the Buddhist tradition where in the Muklinda, the Nagraja protects Buddha from storm by covering the Buddha's head with the seven snake heads. Two divine decuples of Buddha i.e. Sanipata and Mughalana are referred as Mahanaga or Great Nagas. The Naga Sanyukta in Pali consists of literature devoted to the nature of Nagas. One of the door frames of the right sanctum entrance has beautiful carvings as well as multiple images of mythical creatures having human form in the upper part and tail of a snake has been shown. Each pair of images has a male and a female body and their tails are entwined to each other. The large number of images of human form and snake body in the lower part of the door frames substantiate that this was earlier called as Nageshwar temple. I am not really sure about it. Some historians or archaeologists may like to throw some light on this subject. As we go down, we find there are four images of female figures who are wearing beautiful clothes and have very beautiful ornaments. The hair of these four figures are very unique and they look curly rather than straight hair. Out of the three images, one of the images of a lady figure has curly hair. All these fingers are holding some unique instrument or a weapon in their hands. As we move out of left Gurbha Griha in the front, we can see the right Gurbha Griha or the third shrine. In the front, we find a geometrical circle pattern which was probably used as a seat for meditation by the devotees. The overall overview of the main mantapa is shown here. We can see that, there are four pillars forming a square, nearer to the main gate of the Gurbha Griha. These pillars are made up of soapstone. As we move towards the pillar, we find carvings and lathe-like work which has been carried out on the pillars. The middle part of the pillars has a smooth finish. It reflects like image just like a mirror. On the left side of the door frame of the main mantapa is a small temple-like structure made in the recess of the temple wall. Presently, it is empty. The deity is probably has been taken away. It is a trapezoidal roof with beautiful carvings. On the door is the image of Kirti Mukha. Earlier, it had various designed sculpture of human form as well as the image of meditating yogis. However, most of these are presently defaced and not clearly visible. The roof of small temples is beautifully carved with human forms as well as animals and birds.
one can see a duck-like image and images of bear, elephant and lion. They have been carved beautifully enhancing the beauty of the small temple. On the right and left side of the temple, there is carved figure of ferocious lion with full form. As we move out of the main mantapa, towards the garden, we find more beautiful water bodies. Artistically built with small canopied niches inside the walls of the wells enshrining Lingas. There are numerous ancient wells in Lakundi, of which the Chakya Bhavi, Kanne Bhavi and Musukina Bhavi are popular for their carvings architectural beauty. Most of the wells are carved with tiny Shiva shrines in the form of niches into the walls. The water body had developed lot of algae and vegetation. The water body had lot of dirt and garbage. The passage from the entrance gate upon the water gate towards the main garden. The passage is made up of various stone slabs laid over huge stone column. One can also find submerged small temples on the right and left side. When the water level goes down, one can certainly see the temples and image of some deities. On three sides of the Kalyani, there are steps and the approach to the mandapa of the temples forms a bridge on the fourth side. Step wells have been a source of public gathering as well the hub of city centers. They have played a very important roles in the lives of the common citizen, when there was no concept of piped water. These water bodies or kalyanis played very important role during the summer season when the entire village used to dry up. This step well is a very beautiful structure. I have not heard about it. None of my friends have been to this place. Many of Karnataka friends were also not aware about the presence of this beautiful structure. This is another look from the extreme right side of the temple. Here one can clearly see the water body. The bridge connecting the main mantapa and garden. We can also see the column and beams which are surrounding the bridge between main temple and the garden. On the right and left side two temples are found to be submerged up to the roof. These temples are having deities which can be seen when the water level reduces. Such types of mini temples are all around inside of the water body. When I visited this place, I saw many snakes in the water body. This is a zoomed video of the various columns which are used to make the bridge across the water body. I believe that there is a need to bring all such water bodies attached to the temples on the national level. I am now providing some of the beautiful step wells attached to temples in India. Hope you have liked this small documentation. It has taken lot of time and effort to produce this piece of documentation. I would like it to reach more and more people so that the ancient heritage and technology of our ancient nation is known to the old as well as the younger generation. This will definitely instill a sense of pride in their past. Sharing the video among your friends and family members will be my reward. Thanks for watching.